Hello. It's been so great to be in this room today. So how many people here are really, really great at building and having and maintaining business relationships? Okay. How many people use a little work, need a little help? Okay, great. So I want to talk about uh, not just building any relationship, but I want to talk about building authentic relationships. Authentic relationships. And I'm, I'm going to make an assertion up front, which I ask you to try on. You don't have to take everything I say as gospel, but I ask you to try it on, at least for the rest of this talk. And my assertion is that building an authentic relationship is 100% within your control. 100% within your control. That may seem counterintuitive, right? Relationships to people or more, right? But I fundamentally believe everything we manifest in our lives for ourselves is 100% in our control, so why not an authentic relationship? And the truth is, if you separate out the conversation of results or outcome or expectations out of that relationship, okay? which may or may not be achieved in a given time frame that you have artificially set for yourself, then I think it's easier to comprehend because the relationship can be authentic whether or not it achieves the goals you wanted it to achieve in the beginning. In fact, it could, be, it could achieve the goals you wanted in the beginning and be inauthentic and ultimately Ultimately, that's not going to yeah. serve you, and it's gonna not, not going to serve them. So I'm much more interested in authenticity in the relationship. And then we'll talk about one of the five tenets, which is sort of the other half of that, which has something ar around not being tied to the outcomes. So in an authentic relationship, we get to bring our whole self, right? We've had a lot of experiences in this room today around bringing our whole selves, right? We've been thinking about it. We've been experiencing it in our bodies. Okay, that's a key element of an authentic relationship. So how do you create them, right? First tenet, I'm gonna give you five. First tenet, give first. Give first. Now let me take a couple of places where I see this almost never happen. You think there's somebody in your career, for your cause, whatever it is, that can really make a difference for you. Maybe that person's a celebrity, maybe they're a funder, maybe they're just a key influencer, and you've been trying to get access to them and suddenly this opportunity presents themselves. You're in the same room as them, okay? What I see people do over and over and over again is, oh my God, I have this opportunity, I need to let them know everything that I want from them, okay? <laughs> Listen, I have this really great thing, and I know you're gonna love it, right? Now think about those people. Think about their experience of when you do that, when we do that, okay? That happens to them all day, every day. The more powerful people, the more giving people, more influential people, everybody wants at them. What if you gave them something? What if you asked for nothing? What if you did a little research beforehand if you happen to know you're gonna be in the same space as them? And you look for the unique talent, interest, access, or whatever that you had that can make a difference for them. They have nothing to do with what they do. Maybe you find out that they love to, I don't know, build models, or they're really supportive of uh, an animal charity, or they've been really trying to, they're writing their first book, and you happen to know how to write books and get them published. And what if you approach that person and offered up something. Or their people. 
no expectation of anything in return. No quid pro quo, no so that, no if thens, just out of generosity. What do you think the experience of that powerful person, that celebrity, that funder would be of you compared to what we normally do? And you can apply that to any relationship. Give first. Number two, care, be interested. Now here's the thing, you really can't fake this. There are all kinds of seminars out there that will train you in ways that fundamentally I believe come down to faking it, okay? But, number one, it's been a study after study after study. It started with body language, right? We've all heard we communicate much more through our body language than we do through our words. And we can't really control. Now they, there's a bunch of seminars and trying to teach you on how to control your body language and you've got to mirror the person and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. You want to know what? Then they found out, you know what? Wait a second. There's microfacial expressions. <laughs> okay? And there's millions of them. And they, you can't control those. And those microfacial expressions give people impressions. They tell people who you are and what you really are intending and what you mean on a subconscious level, which is where most of information gets transferred. Okay? So the truth of where you are in the space is going to come out. Maybe for a short temporary period you can get over. Okay? But we don't want temporary relationships. We want long-term relationships. And then if you believe, like I do, that everything is energy, and by the way, that's no longer some Eastern, spiritual, mystical conversation, that is also a quantum physics, hard science conversation that has come together, right? There's no such thing as matter. As kids, we learn there's matter. This is energy. It's just in a more dense form. The vibration is different than stuff you can't see. So we do give off energy back and forth. So what does that tell you? You can't fake being interested. You can't fake caring. So only look to build relationships with people who you're truly interested in and you truly care about. <laughs> Forget the rest. Three, show gratitude and appreciation. Show gratitude and appreciation. And you know what? If you truly care and you're interested, this comes from a genuine place. You just gotta remember to do it. It's easy to forget. I received in my office yesterday a unbelievable bouquet of roses. Came with a card from a male client and business contact of mine. And it said, real men give flowers. I miss you, let's have lunch, drinks, whatever, I want to reconnect. Okay? Right? This is, I mean, knows my wife, there's no, you know, there's no personal, that, that, that's a business conversation for him. Now, would I be telling that on stage here if he sent me an email saying, hey, thanks, let's reconnect? Probably not. Right? So he, had, he went out of his way to get my attention, right? I know we've talked generally about getting together. My schedule's really busy. My assistant's scheduling me months out, whatever, okay? I said, Don, get Tony on the calendar as soon as possible, okay? Because he was willing to show gratitude and appreciation in a way that was thoughtful, that went out of his way, that was really out of the box. I've never gotten flowers, I don't know if I've gotten flowers from a client, certainly not from a male client. Right? And it's so easy to skip that step. It's so easy, especially in this digital age. And I'm, I'm not, I am so into, you know, connectivity, social media, all that kind of stuff, whatever, but you know what's happened? You can use then what's become the unusual, like the handwritten letter, right? To really take it up a notch. And here's the other thing. When you put out gratitude, the universe 
brings it back, right? The results in our lives are a mirror of what we are putting out. They're a mirror. So let's put out gratitude and appreciation for those great relationships. Number four, mutual respect. Now I'm gonna flip this a little bit because mutual respect, probably everybody's thinking, oh, I need to respect them and they need to respect me. But remember I said, this is 100% within your control. So we're not gonna talk about whether they respect you, they don't respect you, whatever. The mutual respect for me is that you need to respect them and you need to respect you. Okay? You need to respect them, you need to respect you. If you cannot respect them in the relationship, not a relationship you should be in. If you can't respect yourself in the relationship, probably not a relationship you, can be, you should be in. Or maybe it's a relationship you should be in and there's an opportunity for you to learn something about yourself because the lack of being respected in, in that relationship is not necessarily be driven by the other person, but it's by driven by the lesson you need to learn. So it could be one of those two. Finally, number five, trust. What I basically said to you so far is give first, right? You don't know if it's ever gonna come back or how, or, right? Care and be interested. Show gratitude and appreciation and mutual respect. Well, without trust, none of that's possible, right? The lack of trust is what causes us to be in that scarcity. See, I trust that if I am of service to others in a relationship, okay, that I will be taken care of. It's not linear, though. It's not quid pro quo, though, okay? I got a, somebody who I met 20 years ago, hadn't spoken to for about 12 years until we sort of reconnected over email to potentially play some golf, whatever. Next thing I know, referred me to my biggest client last year, over $150,000 in fees, okay? Now, if 20 years ago or 12 years ago or whatever, I had an agenda on what would come out of that relationship or had a scarcity around the timing of when it had to pay off, that biggest client last year would not have been possible. So we need to trust in the timing, trust in spirit, trust that if we take that next right action, we're of service, it's all gonna show up back to us. Here's the other thing that's gonna be pretty counterintuitive. How many people, you hire a new employee, or any kind of new relationship, a contractor, a funder, whoever it is, um, and you know what, you're open, and they can earn your trust, right? They do the right things, they can earn your trust. Okay, how many people, that's the case. All right. How many people give trust before you even know anything about the person? Good. I would suggest to you that there's a huge opportunity in being willing to trust. Now there's risk. You will get hurt more often, or you could. I don't wanna create that. Yeah. But you could, you're, you're opening yourself up to getting hurt more often, okay? But when you give trust, people know that. The opportunities that come out of that will far outweigh those times when somebody screws you, quote unquote, okay? And this is the really counterintuitive one. The only time that trust really, really counts is after it's been broken and you give it again. To give it when everything's fine is easy. But when that person breaks that trust, Okay, now I'm not talking about people who break the trust over and over and over again. That's a different conversation. Okay, that's when you make a different decision. But we're all human. Okay, we're far from perfect. We make bad decisions. Good people do bad things. If we have the ability to trust after that's happened, what does that say to that other person? What level of commitment to relationship do they have with you as opposed to all those people that wrote them off? So that's my top five. So I wanna ask you, I don't think, you probably have heard most of that in various ways. You may have others that you would put in the top on that. But does that resonate, does those five resonate with people? 
okay? All right, so I have a question. Most people here said that they're not phenomenal at building relationships. Most people, I don't think this is, I mean, you might have, things might have been reaffirmed you know, for you. Maybe I've given you little pieces here or there that resonate. But conceptually, these aren't new things. You, you've heard them before. You know these. So why, if we know these, don't we have all great relationships? And I would suggest to you it's not all because of them. Okay? It's not all because of them. They may have a nickel in the dime. They may have nine cents in the dime. All right? But there's a part over here, and that's what we can control. Okay? There's, you know, various forms of the saying of that, you know, when I was younger, I was out to change the world, and now I understand it's about changing myself. And then it will manifest out. So I'm going to ask you all to do something for me. I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. I'm going to ask for silence during this process. Okay? Um, if everybody could just trust where you're called to do this. If it's somebody you don't know, trust that. I want you to pair up. Just get your own little space with two people. Just pair up face to face. Okay? I'll give that a few seconds. And make sure that there's nothing in between the two of you, so not across a table or a chair in between. Great. Okay, if everybody could close their eyes. All right, close their eyes. There's going to be no talking during this entire exercise. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Don't do it until I'm going to count to three and say open your eyes and then you'll do what I said to do. But um, first I want to give you instructions. So here's the thing. You're going to be totally silent. There's going to be no communication between the two of you. You're going to be face to face, literally face to face. When I say no communication, it's not only no talking, but no gesturing, okay? No facial expressions intended to communicate something to the other person. I mean, don't be stiff, be you know, natural, but, but try, try to just be with what I'm gonna ask you to do. Um, it may come up for you to wanna look away, or look down. Emotions may come up for you. Trust the space that we've created here and let those emotions come if they come, whatever they are. There's access to that, okay? So when I count to three, I'm, what I'm gonna ask you to do, again, is to be face to face, square. You're gonna open your eyes and you're gonna look straight into your partner's eyes. And you're gonna hold their eyes and just be in their truth and your truth. And then just notice what comes up for you, whether it's in thoughts, whether it's in feelings, whether it's in your body, however it manifests, okay. and trust the process. No communication. Ready? Three, two, one, open.
silently acknowledge your partner in whatever way is comfortable. A smile, a hug, a handshake, silently. All right, everybody can take their seat. So what I would, uh, what I'd love to hear from some people is just share what came, what came up for you in that process. And it was just very strong and like just saying so much, um, but a humanity came. Mm -hmm. um, that, not that it wasn't there before, but it, I just really, at least I felt, I began to see you. Um, and then a smiling happened where both, it happened for both of us, but it wasn't like in the mouth or anything like that. It was very much so in the eyes. It was just very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so it went from like, um, yeah, to brilliance to this like kind of vulnerability, I think is the word I want to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, perfect. So, so how often, first of all, how often do we connect on that level to anybody that we're looking to build a relationship with? I'm not saying you have to stare into their eyes. <laughs> But I'm saying, how often do we connect? And what's the opportunity in doing that? And I love the vulnerability. How often are we willing to be vulnerable, okay, in, being, in establishing a business, especially a business relationship? But what did that vulnerability provide? We're all walking around in business with these armors up, with this persona we put on, okay? We have who we are, and then we have who we are in business for most of us, okay? Me too. But it's amazing, because that's not our authentic self. That's not. And we're afraid to show who we are in business because we have some perception of what business is and everybody else is walking around the same way. <laughs> okay? So if you are willing to be vulnerable, you give them permission to be vulnerable. And then the connection happens at a level that they don't know They've just never had in business. Who else? Uh, I felt that it drew attention to the stillness. I mean, even, even just standing still with that is not something that I do very often. And I felt like um, she was. I felt, sorry, I felt like she was bearing witness to that stillness in myself and mm. was reflecting it back to me, which was really interesting. Great. So how often do the people that you are in a relationship with in business see that stillness in you? Probably not that often because we're constantly moving. Right. What would be the opportunity? I think creating moments where you can cultivate stillness together. Mm -hmm. um, I think that can look like a lot of different things, even from meditations together or even just slowing down and having a meal. Right. And how different, I mean, that would be like getting a bouquet of roses in the office, right? That's like disconnected. Yeah. That's like something that's not usual. Who else? Our exchange of breath. At one point, I think the both of us noticed that our breath was in sync, mm. like completely in sync. And... Um, just that reciprocity and just feeling really equal to someone and that way just to the core of breath is really beautiful to experience. That's really fantastic. They've done studies on that, right? People spend a lot of time together. You actually, your breathing patterns do actually start aligning. Mm -hmm. And then there's an energetic connection. But how, long, how often do we do that in business? And I'm, again, it doesn't have to be the breathing per se, but how often do we do what we need to do to have that synergy Right? In Sometimes energy. I feel like I hold my breath during the, business stuff. There you go. Or like I'm breathing really hard. Or like, you know, right. like I just, I, or my breath isn't even something that I'm noticing. So what? I notice so, the words or the interactions. Can I take a cut deeper on that with mm -hmm. you? Okay. So when you're um, <laughs> holding your breath or your breath is racing, what's, under, what's underneath that for you? Anxiety. Got it. <laughs> right. And where does the anxiety come from? Judgment from the other end. So you're afraid, you perceive or, or are afraid that they're judging you? Of course, yeah. Got that's it. what it is. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so, so that's brilliant because I, I would offer to you that that's the place to work. I mean, you know, great. You can give first, you can do all that stuff and whatever, mm -hmm. and you should, okay? But where, where, it work, where it's really going to work for you to build authentic relationships in, in business mm -hmm. is to dig in deep to 
that fear of judgment, right? Whatever that looks like for you, whether it's past-based, wherever that comes from, not feeling like you're enough, or whatever conversation's there for you, okay? That is where the act, because it's all made up, right? right? Absolutely. It's all, it's all made up, yes, it okay? Is. Right? Clear that that she was perceiving me, my my essence, for lack of a more less overused word. Yes, and so I didn't feel judged at all, and I felt like the rhythm of my breath just fall into this beautiful natural cadence, and it, and hers too. That's great. And that was you. That's who mm -hmm. you are. <laughs> So, so for people who had things come up, like, I'm sorry, what, what's your name? Genoline. Genoline? Mm -hmm. Like Genoline, okay. Anything that came up that was uncomfortable, that brought up some, some emotion or some fear or some lack of trust or judgment there or anything like, like that, okay. Anybody have any of that? All right, yeah, number of people, okay. That's where the opportunity for you to work is. That's where the body of work that I would recommend you, you delve into to really be able, because on the level of tips and techniques and strategies, okay, you can achieve marginal incremental difference, okay? But that's not where the real work comes from. That's not where the real opportunity comes from. The real opportunity comes from inside of us, what limiting beliefs, what is within us that is holding us back from really having those authentic relationships. These tips and techniques get you there because if, if you have a block that doesn't let you give first, okay, like keeping in mind I should give first or keeping in mind respect or trust, you, you can use that to notice when it's not there, but then don't stop there. Then we go and say, okay, why is it not there? What is that underlying belief, limiting belief, emotion, whatever it is, and that's where the work is. Thank you. Thank you.